It's Psalms 22 this morning about the rise to the undisputed kingship of the universe. There's a lot of similarities between uh, the rise of David to be the king and the rise of Christ to be the king of the universe. Um, Psalm 22 verse 13 on what says, Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. So all my joints um, are out of, all my bones are out of joint. You know, David was prophesying three, four thousand years before it happened. Uh, what ha before what happened to Jesus on the cross last Sunday, Easter, Good Friday, on Good Friday. That was a prophetic word God inspired. God breathed upon David for David to prophesy that. Amazing, down to the details to to the dots like all my bones out of joint. No one can even imagine crucifixion causes your bones to be out of joint. You know how excruciating painful that is? I cannot even imagine. This is what happened to a man who is hung on the cross. His body weight pulled him down and uh, his breathing, every breath hurts because because you're pulling your body. Your body's barely hanging on the cross on your two palms and the two feet stuck there. It's a, it's a, it's a decidedly shameful and painful public death to, that brings top humiliation. And that, that's what the Son of God decided to go through even before this took place. Three, four thousand years ago, it was prophesied that this is going to happen, and exactly to the down to the details is exactly what happened on the cross. Does that make you marvel how accurate, how decidedly God's sovereignty, God, the sovereign God, is in control of everything? He knows exactly and He, he planned everything, He foreordained. In fact, before the foundation of the world, the Son of God has already preordained, already planned He's going to die for the world into such details. You know, there's no way you can say here, oh, God said He's going to die and leave the details out like He could be killed by a sword, He could be beheaded, or, you know, this is a more common way. Uh, this crucifixion business is is an invention in the by the by the Roman Roman Empire to demonstrate to impose a, a fear on all those who may rebel against Rome. Rome was at like four five hundred BC. That's you know, King David wrote the Psalms like four thousand three four thousand BC. So well before that. And God already predestined that this is going to happen even before the foundation of the world. Be Though at that time, that verse says, before the foundation of the world, God has already foreordained His Son will die on the cross, or will die for humanity. But it didn't say that, how is He going to die? That was, but now in Psalm 22, God spelled it out, so to speak, through David that Jesus is going to die in the death that the Son of God is going to die in the death that with his bones, all his bones out of joint. How excruciating pain. And that's what Jesus went through for us. And my heart has turned to wax. In other words, my heart melts like wax in the ESV. It's like wax, it's just melting. It just can't hold it anymore physically. No man can hold that. In fact, he died early, Jesus, on the cross. Okay, so 
what this is the first point the second point is that you know and also they pierced okay what yes they go verse 14 dogs around me a pack of villains encircles me they pierce my hands and my feet they pierce my hands and my feet down to the detail exactly three four thousand years ago they're already describing the crucifixion without using the word cross or crucifixion they pierce my hands and my feet right there all my bones are on display people stare and gloat over me they divide my clothing among them and cast lots from my garment astonishing astonishingly accurate this is precisely what happened they cast lots with jesus garments on the cross when jesus was hung on the cross all this happened fulfilled the scripture down to the dots no wonder every dot and line of the scripture must be fulfilled it has never failed it will never fail it's how precise it doesn't bring you to a sense of awe that you will have to begin to watch your lives begin to to seek after the god that is so sacrificial and uh, you know, you know, and uh, he he listened to the cry of the afflicted, and David partially himself. This is this is what is happening. David had to go through a very hard time, a lot of persecutions before he actually bef became the king of Israel. In the same way, prophetically fulfilled, the Son of God Himself has to go through an awful suffering, bones out of joint. His hands and uh, his feet are pierced before rising up to be the undisputed king of this world. So this is two things going on concurrently. The the pattern, the pattern is that in the what was figurative expression of David's sufferings became literal sufferings of Jesus. David prefigured Jesus in many many ways to this great heir to the throne that God promised him. Okay, so he suffered great hardships before he was held as Israel's undisputed king. So too did Jesus undergo great sufferings before he was, he was exalted as the world's undisputed king. Suffering precedes uh, installment, exaltation. That great greatness happening. So apply that to your life and our lives. In fact, in fact, Paul said it in Romans 8, 70 to 18, says this. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Indeed, if we, if, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. That's a conclusive, conclusive remark now. You must share in Christ's sufferings in order to share in Christ's glory. David shared that fully before he achieved the glory to become the king of Israel. Jesus had to suffer so much in order to be installed as the undisputed king of, over the entire cosmos. So they go hand in hand in parallel. So it is amazing that Paul says that spirit himself testify with my spirit that we are god's children and if now if we are children we're heirs if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may share in his glory you may be thinking if there's so much sufferings i don't want glory i don't need glory just bring me to heaven but that's not right theologically because the bible talks about he's bring us through he justifies us and then what? He sanctifies us, make us more and more holy to more like him. And then he sanctifies us and he glorifies us to be really shining as, as Christ uh, followers, as, as children of God, son and daughters of God. That is the ultimate goal. He's not going to leave you hanging there with, with limbs, half walking, half limping. And uh, I mean, spiritually, character was metaphorically. As long as you get to heaven, no, he wants your heart to be transformed, to be glory, glorified, to be beautiful. 
and then bring you to heaven to be glorified. Amen.